Welcome to this week's bonus video. Today we're looking at the August 2023 Eternal Format Tournament that took place at Dragon's Lair at Alamo Ranch here in San Antonio, Texas. The tournament today is base set through Obsidian Flames. This tournament took place prior to the emergency bans on Houndoom and the Technical Machine TS1. So do keep that in mind as we look at some of the lists later. But I will say this, this tournament is very interesting. We see some very different decks in this particular tournament. Do keep an eye out for the deck lists before each of the rounds. That's where the featured decks will have their deck lists. Now, before we begin, a quick explanation of the Eternal format. Officially, there are three formats. There's Standard, Expanded, and Unlimited. Standard is what most tournaments are held in. That's what all the regionals and internationals have been held in. Expanded is a format that goes back all the way to black and white, so there's a bigger card pool. Also an official format. Events used to be held in that format, not so much anymore. TPCI hasn't really supported it since the COVID pandemic. Uh, unfortunately, that means that Expanded is kind of dead for the most part because a lot of areas focus on the competitive format, which currently is only standard unlimited on the flip side even before covid there was just nothing competitive for it because frankly the format is decided by the winner of the coin flip we joke of course in standard about how the coin flip is the decider of many many games but in this case if you are the one who attacks first so in other words if you win the coin flip you're going to be the winner of the game now eternal says okay we like the unlimited card pool but let's get rid of the broken stuff let's ban that and now we have the eternal format if you want to learn more about the eternal format and its ban list you can go to justinbasil.com slash eternal do just that. Additionally, if you happen to be in the San Antonio area on October 14th, there will be another Eternal Format tournament here in real life at Dragon's Lair at Alamo Ranch. Registration and deck validation will open at 11 with the tournament itself starting promptly at noon. I hope to see you there. Now let's look at round one. Round one is going to be Reggie Gigas versus Lost Link Box. I'm going to come out straight, guys. This is actually a replacement match for the original round one, but Reggie Gigas was in the original round one, so we're going to look at a slightly newer version of Reggie Gigas than was originally played in this particular tournament, but this replacement game is super fun, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, let's first look at the Reggie Gigas deck list. So here we have a couple of copies of Execute. That, of course, has the propagation ability, allows you to pull it from the discard pile into your hand. This is great for the deck because you're able to burn propagation execute when you wouldn't necessarily be able to discard your special energy cards. So if you need to make use of Reg Ice's Poke Power, for example, you can do that. You just dump a couple of those eggs into the discard pile and then push your opponent's active basic Pokemon out of the active spot. It also allows you to make use of Quick Balls a little bit more easily, your Ultra Ball a little more easily. Basically, it's just great. And then on top of all of that, Roxy is like the powerhouse drawer draw machine in this deck. So if you're discarding two Pokemon that aren't Pokemon EX or GX, you're drawing six cards, right? You get three for each one you discard. So to discard your two Propagation Executes, you're getting an instant draw six. Extremely powerful draw effect in Eternal. Definitely worth playing if you have the room for the eggs and the Roxies. Of course, we are looking at Reggie Drago. We are looking at uh, Reggie Alecki and Reggie Gigas. Those you're all familiar with, we see the older version of Reggie Rock. This is the promo Reggie Rock from X and Y that has the ancient trait that prevents you from just gusting it up. And then we have Reggie Steel. Again, Reggie Steel, same one you're expecting from standard. There's also the Kyogre, the amazing rare Kyogre that splashes damage everywhere. And then you see some familiar friends from prior to rotation, including, of course, that Kyogre. Uh, but Eveltal, cool. Instant knockout on any big guy on the opposing side. But also, Naginatl and Guzzler GX. So Naginata and Guzzler GX has an insanely powerful GX attack that says put all your prize cards face up. And then it says if you have extra energy attached, just take two of those prize cards. Super, super powerful. Great way to finish games. Great way to get ahead on prize cards if you need to. And then what's crazy too, this deck is running Skyfield. Now in standard, you're thinking, oh, well, Regigigas can accelerate to any of the Regis. Super cool. Well, the thing is, Regigigas' ability says nothing about accelerating only to the Regis. It can accelerate to whatever. The problem isn't standard. Bench is limited to five, right? That's the normal bench limitation but skyfield says actually you can have eight and now reggie giga says oh i can attach to some new friends so that could be naganadal and guzzlord it could be kyogre it could be a veltal or maybe you've already attached a bunch of energy to reggie gigas and you need to do a game ending play with naganadal and guzzlord well you have thornton and thornton allows you to make that game ending play with naganadal and guzzlord gx's gx attack a couple other things before we jump on because this deck list is so interesting uh, there's the ace spec scoop up cyclone so they can immediately scoop up one of their pokemon uh scoop up net 
that is banned in this format. So scoop up Cyclone is nice effect. Same effect. Very, very good effect. And then also we have Rescue Energy. Rescue Energy, if you played in Expanded for a while, you might remember Splash Energy, where once your Pokemon is knocked out, that Pokemon and its evolution line go to your hand and everything that's attached to that, including the energies, are discarded. Rescue Energy works the same way. Super, super cool effect on Regigigas. And now we can look at Lost Link Box. Lost Link Box is a variant of Lost Box in the Eternal format. Lost Box looks pretty different in Eternal than it does in Standard. You'll notice there's no Comfey. Uh, that's intentional. You don't really want it or need it. You're using Jirachi from Rising Rivals instead. The way the deck works is you're going to play your Colorless Experiment. You're going to want to go second usually. You'll play your Colorless Experiment, get your, your five cards off the top with the two in the Lost Zone, and then you will use Jirachi's Detour to copy the effect of the supporter card that you played that turn, which Let's be honest, it's going to be Colorus' experiment. You basically just double Colorus every turn until you have what you want in the Lost Zone. Now you're running four copies of Lost Vacuum to try to accelerate that, but ultimately you're just kind of building your Lost Zone as quickly as you need, and you don't really need to go that quick. And the reason for that is the way this deck works. You'll notice this deck plays both Origin Form Dialga V-Star and Dialga GX, but it also plays Metagem V. All three of these cards have a way to take an extra turn. So what you can do, and if you can set it up with either Sableye or Kyogre, you can theoretically get like five turns in a row. You have your current turn, then you have Dialga GX, then you swing in for Metacham, take a knockout, then you have Dialga V-Star, take a knockout, or not, and then you have Metacham to take another turn, right? So you can go bam, 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 and take a whole bunch of knockouts in a row before your opponent really has any way to respond. Of course, the way you're doing these attacks is copying them with Triumphant Mew. The Mew from Triumphant has a Pokebody called Lost Link that allows you to copy the attacks of any Pokemon you have in the Lost Zone, which is why you're perfectly cool with putting Dialgas and the Metacham and pretty much anything you have to attack with in a Lost Zone because you're going to spill a bunch of energy on the Mew and use its Lost Link to copy those attacks. You'll set it all up and go ham. Now, the balance in this particular deck is that it's slowed down by the fact that it takes quite a while to set up. So if your opponent has a way to spread a lot of damage, you're probably not going to succeed. But if they don't, or if they're a little bit slow of a deck like you are, you can you can be pretty dangerous. We will see in this game a little bit of a multi-prize combo. So do look out for that. Anyway, let's look at round one. All right, let's watch our players get shuffled up real quick. Players are getting shuffled up. Get their start going, and we're going to see a reveal here. All right, so it's a Reggie Lucky in the active and a Jirachi in the active. Definitely good to see the Jirachi in the active. It's very good for this deck. Uh, it looks like Reggie Gigas is going first. Looking at their prize cards, realizing Greninja is really the only option they have there. Going for the Greninja, seems good. This deck, you definitely want energy in the discard pile, so getting Greninja out early is pretty good. Unlike in standard Regigigas, where you don't really have bench space for it, uh, Eternal Regigigas, you, you'll you have plenty because you have Skyfield. All right, so a little bit of shuffling up. Did not quite catch the card that he took off of Trainer's Mail. All right, so we see the Radiant Greninja discarding a double colorless energy. Do a little cut there and a draw. Is it not? Can't quite can't quite make out those two cards. It looks like maybe an Evelto off of one of those. I see a color versus experiment come down on the Lost Link side. Lost zoning a Kyogre. A metal energy. Interesting choices. Kyogre makes sense to me. I'm not I'm not sure about the metal energy. I see a discard of a reading Greninja. That's that's a little wild. Got that second Jirachi down. Getting a Mew out for Bench Barrier. I talked to the player about this particular deck list, and I said they, they know Mew is not the right Bench Barrier Pokemon to be using in this deck. But it's what they had and didn't have proxied, so that's what they went with. All right, they are going to Lost Zone. Another couple of cards there, and it looks like a Ranguru and a Mirage Gate. So... Reggie player draws a Thornton off of the top deck. Not exactly what they want, but they do have a Roxy in hand. So Roxy is a supporter card that allows you to discard up to two Pokemon that are not Pokemon EX or Pokemon GX. And for each Pokemon you discard in this way, you draw three cards. So you saw the two cards get discarded, or two Pokemon get discarded there, rather. Uh, so it's just draw six, which is super strong. And then you see a Battle Compressor go down for those eggs. So execute. This is the Propagation Execute from Plasma Freeze, I believe it is. 
basically just lets you take it from the discard pile and put it right back into your hand. So with Roxy, you can kind of chain the draw. So every turn that you have a Roxy, you can just take those eggs back, nuke them both for a draw six. Super, super strong effect. Did you see a Reggie Rock come down? That's the promo from X and Y. A couple more uh, special energy cards ending up in the discard pile there, it looks like. Did just see a counter energy go down. And a rescue energy. I think that's a prism energy, but I'm not entirely sure. That was off of the battle compressor, if I'm not mistaken. Did you see another Acrobike? Acrobike looking at a Reggie Gigas and a Reggie Steel. Not the best choice to have to make, but I mean, at least you're getting your Reggies out. And a pass. See another Color vs. Experiment right off the top deck from the Lost Link Box player. That's got to feel pretty good. Do you see a Sableye and it looks like Origin Form Dialga V-Star. Yes, that is the V-Star going into the Lost Zone there. And we see Mew Prime drop. Mew Prime is, of course, the main attacker in this deck using Lost Link to copy the attacks of Pokemon in the Lost Zone. Of course, you're going to need the energy necessary to use the attack that you're copying. Um, the player here that's playing Lost Link is keeping that supporter card they played for turn out. Uh, you're not supposed to do that technically, but it, I mean, it's fine, whatever. I just want to keep track of what what supporter card they use each turn to make sure they're not uh, inadvertently cheating using Detour on Jirachi. All right, we do see a Mirage Gate here. It's like a psychic and a metal energy coming out of the deck, maybe. The active Jirachi does have free retreat, so if they can get the energy necessary on Mew, they could start attacking. Changing their mind to Psychic and Lightning, it looks like. Okay, yeah, Psychic Lightning. Okay. Going for a different sort of approach. And we have the invasion of the kitty cat. <laughs> She's like, this is my spot now. <laughs> this is the replacement game. This game did not happen during a regular tournament, so that's why we have the kitty invasion. But it's a good game, so we're going to share it. And like I said, in the intro of this uh, a version of this Reggie Gigas deck did play in the original uh, round one game. So it's not all of us. All right, we do see a quick ball and I think that's another Colors experiment going into the Lost Zone and a pass. So it is now Reggie's turn. I have to wonder if we're going to see a Versus Seeker for Roxy. Do see that propagation come down. And the Roxy in the hand, no need for the first Seeker. All right, so we do see a couple more uh, eggs get discarded. Even though the game doesn't know they're the same eggs, they are the same eggs. But that's a fresh draw six, which is super strong in a deck that, or six was super strong in a, against a deck that runs next to no disruption. Do you see another, another Acker bike there? I saw a Reg Ice and something else. Choosing to discard the Quick Ball. Okay, Quick Ball was the other card. So Red Ice goes down. Red Ice has that Reggie move Poke Power. So you discard a couple cards and you can basically force out a, a basic Pokemon from your opponent's active spot. Pretty good effect, actually. So do you see Skyfield come down? So their bench can now be larger than both players' benches can now be larger than five cards. Go all the way up to eight. We just see a quick ball discarding a Naganadal and Guzzlord GX. Have to imagine he's going for the Regigigas, and there's the Regigigas. Go figure. With a shuffle, shuffle. So that will complete the uh, the needs of the Regis to power them up. So I do have to see, we'll, we'll have to see it in Ancient Wisdom here. And I think he's choosing the energy right now, which energies he wants to choose to attach, I think, to that Reggie Alecki to take a KO. I'm going to forego that for now and use a Trainer's Mail instead. Getting a Scoop Up Cyclone. That is interesting. Scoop Up Cyclone is a an A-Spec card. Uh, rem reminder, of course, for everyone that A-Specs are coming back in Scarlet and Violet 5 at the beginning of the year. So do keep an eye out for those. Who knows which ones they'll be, but maybe Scoop Up Cyclone will be one of them. So Scoop Up Cyclone has the effect of just scooping up your Pokemon and everything attached to it. So if they wanted to, for example, get rid of that 
Reggie Gigas on the bench right now. They could scoop it up. If they wanted to get that Reggie like in the active spot, they would scoop it and all the energy is attached to it and it would all go straight to their hand. We are going to see a knockout via that Reggie Alecki. So that Jirachi will be discarded. We're going to see the Poke Power activated on that Jirachi. The Poke Power says to search your deck for a card and put it in your hand. I believe its name is Final Wish. Super, super, super strong effect. Uh, I see a lost vacuum, and I am now realizing the card that I thought was a color resist experiment going to the lost one earlier was actually a lost vacuum. So maybe that's relevant. I uh, do see another Mirage Gate attaching some more energy to that Mew. Looks like they're gearing up for a multi turn attack here. Guzma coming down, maybe? Yep, we are going to see a Guzma gusting up the Regigigas. Going to decide to take that down. So Regigigas has exactly 150 HP, which is exactly what Dialga GX, GX attack can do. You did just see the Dialga GX land in the Lost Zone recently. So if that Mew Prime copies Dialga's Timeless GX with Lost Link, it will be able to knock out the Regigigas and then take another turn, which is exactly what's about to happen. And there it goes. So you see the knockout on the Regigigas. And now the Mew, the Lost Link box player, is going to take another turn. So they draw to start their second turn. Let's see, they're going to play an Ordinary Rod. They're going to get back two Pokemon and two basic energy. So, okay. Choosing only to do one basic energy, that's fine. So at this point, they need an extra metal energy on that Mew Prime in order to have enough energy to use the origin form Dialga V Stars, Star Kronos. Star Kronos will do 220 damage, which math wise isn't super relevant in this matchup, but it will allow them to take another prize card. So you do see that manual attachment off uh, from the hand there for that metal energy. So that Mew Prime will be able to use Star Kronos and will be able to take a third turn in a row. Let me see. Versus Seeker maybe coming down first. Looks like they're kind of debating it. Nope, they're just going to hit into it with a V-Star power. All right, so Star Cronus is going to take a knockout. Uh, Pokemon went back to the hand with the effect of the rescue energy. You see a level ball. For a Lapras, trying to dig for a supporter card, maybe? Nope, going for Sableye. Choosing to use Sableye instead, hoping probably to use the attack that Kyogre has. Uh, Kyogre in the Lost End does 80 to everything, and then they can just come back in later and clean everything up. That will make it a little bit easier to get multiple prize cards in a turn. I don't think the Lost Link Bucks player knows about the scoop up cyclone that could be a bit of an issue uh taking some of those damage counters out of play but we'll see we are going to see a guzma come down choosing to gust up the reg ice and if i remember right they're just pushing their jirachi to the active spot and immediately retreating it out and boom yeah so that is indeed the kyogre attack so it's going to hit everything for 80. Unfortunately, the Regigigas deck does not have any way to protect itself bench barrier wise. So it just kind of has to eat that damage. Which does hurt a bit. We do see the Hissy Wing Heavy Ball come down. If I remember right, the player commented something along like, hey, look, it didn't change. But they wanted to burn the card from their hand. Do you see the Reggie Alecki come down again? And a Rescue Stretcher. Yep, fishing that. Reggie Gigas back out of the discard pile so that it can use its ancient wisdom and do some uh, energy attaching. That active Reg Ice is kind of a bulky boy though, so we'll see how that gets out of the active spot. Maybe a float stone? Kind of making a hard decision here, it looks like. Yep. Choosing to use that scoop up cyclone to get that reg ice out of the active spot. And then putting down the Reggie Alecki to the active spot for this knockout. Using Ancient Wisdom, using the attachments from the discard pile 
off of the ability to attach to the active Regieleki so that this Mew Prime will go down. And that is a lot of energy going down with it. At this point, the Mew Prime deck has spent a lot of its resources trying to get to this point, trying to take those extra turns, trying to set up late game knockouts. It's at this point that the deck either succeeds and takes the game or starts to fizzle terribly and ultimately fails. So we'll see which happens here. We do see another Roxy come down and a straight draw six. Once again, so, so strong. I'm gonna see a, maybe? I see a Skyfield in the hand. I don't know if they're gonna play it down. It would be a little preemptive probably, but I, they could definitely do it to make sure it doesn't get uh, shuffled away if if that Mew Prime player happens to play uh, Iono or something. All right. So taking a knockout, saying, hey, look, these guys are the targets. I know it doesn't do anything, but they're the targets. <laughs> All right. So do you see an attachment to that Sableye and an immediate retreat out of the Jirachi into the Sableye? Trying to clean up a couple knockouts by taking out the Registeel and the Reggie Drago. Boom and boom. That's two more prize cards for the Mew Prime player. I'm putting the extra damage, looks like on that Reg Ice. So at this point, that Reggie Rock is really the only thing that is still damaged significantly on the board but both are still in danger zone because of Sableye and its little gremlin tactics. We just see a Reggie Drago come down. And we're looking for the discard pile. Maybe there's a rescue stretcher. Nope, just has just has the Registeel in hand. Doesn't even need the rescue stretcher. That's pretty nifty. So that is once again, all the Reggie's out and ready to go. We do see Ancient Wisdom come back down. See an attachment on that Reggie Alecki. So it is once again ready to take a knockout. So at this point, it is five prize cards to two. We do see a Thornton come down, swapping out, swapping out that, that damaged Reggie to bulk it up so that it doesn't get KO'd by Sableye. Pretty good play from the Reggie Gigas player. Makes it a little harder to take those KOs when your opponents just made that Pokemon significantly significantly bulkier do you see managed to see a float stone off that trainer's mail that could be pretty good do see skyfield come down skyfield once again dropping reggie rock gonna enable them to attach some energy from the discard pile do you see a prism energy come onto the uh, Naganal and Guzzlord, and we see a uh, knockout here on that on that Sableye. And then those Prism Energies are going from the Regieleki to the discard pile again. See a, another Jirachi from Rising Rivals come down on the bench there. And now the Mew player is kind of in a bit of a pickle. You see an Ordinary Rod, they can get the Mew back, but at this point the resources in their deck are pretty, pretty rough. So we do see the Mew, the Sableye, and two Psychic Energies. All of them going back to the deck. I have to imagine they're hoping to set up another Sableye play. I do think it's maybe a little too late to try to set up another Mew Prime attack. Uh, another another Kyogre play could be good, but it may be too little too late at this point. Once again, that Reggie's player is still quite behind on prize cards. But it doesn't seem to matter. They are still in a better spot. The, the Lost Link box just had to pass. This is what happens when your deck fizzles. All right, we do you see Ancient Wisdom. Oh, nope, Guzma first, Guzma first. Reggie Drago coming down, going to the active spot there. And do you see Ancient Wisdom attaching to the Reggie Drago, maybe? No? Nope, changing their mind about which energy. So they're using a counter energy and a double colorless energy? Oh yeah, that's gonna easily fulfill the attack cosmos. So the counter energy is basically providing two rainbow at this moment. So that'll easily pro provide the attack cost necessary there. All right, <clears throat> so we do see the Reggie Drago take the knockout on that Mew. I see a Mirage Gate, which could be good. 
but it, like I said earlier, it may just be a little too late. Oh no. Are they going to be attacking on Jirachi? They are. Oh no, such devastating damage. I think that's just going to be game. And yet we see a retreat on that Reggie Drago. Retreating into the Naganala Guzzlord. We see the attachment of those Prism energies. Yes, yep. Attachment of Prism energies and the GX. So that GX attack is Chaotic Order GX, which for a colorless energy reveals all your prize cards and says that if you have a darkness energy and a psychic energy attached to it, which this player does in the form of Prism energy, then you just take two of those prize cards and that's game. All right, it is time for round two, which is United Wings versus Maridon EX. So Murkrow, of course, is going to be a very star attacker in this deck, which is why it's featured on this image. But this deck has quite a lot of tricks up its sleeve. You'll see in this deck list here that it has access to Marshadow GX, which will be especially important in this matchup as Marshadow will be copying the attacks of basic Pokemon in your discard pile and hitting for a fighting weakness, which Maridon, of course, is fighting weak, as is Picaram, the other Pokemon that that deck runs. As other options, it can, of course, also attack with Mew or with Ditto or even with the United Wingsers themselves. And the deck has lots of ways to go turbo, turbo, turbo and just get everything out as fast as it possibly can. It has acrobikes, it has trekking shoes to just dig, dig, dig. It has even Battle Compressor. Battle Compressor, search your deck for three cards and discard them. Maridon, of course, in this particular case, Turbo Maridon, also wants to go very quickly. It just does so differently. Maridon has Tandem Unit to get other Maridon out and Pigarom out when it wants it. And then it has access to Electric Generator and Max Elixir to just nuke everything. So you can easily attach like five, six energy in a turn if you can hit enough of those electric generators. Now, that's cool. Super simple, super basic. You have Thunder Mountain Prism Star to reduce the attack cost of one of your lightning Pokemon by one, which makes it even easier to attack with Maridon, but it also makes it even easier to attack with Picarom. Picarom, of course, can take two knockouts if your opponent has no bench barrier effect in play. With that said, with the introduction of these two decks, let's look at round two. All right, let's look at round two as our players get shuffled up. Again, this is Maridon versus United Wings. United Wings got to go fast. Maridon got to go fast. We got two very turbo decks here. I've played a fair bit of United Wings in Eternal. I got to say the deck goes crazy stupid fast. It is not at all difficult to get down to like 10, 12 cards on turn one. That's 10 to 12 cards left in your deck at the end of your first turn. Especially if you go second, it's just devastating. All right, we see a Picarom start and an unfortunate glare on that opening ditto. Do you remember recording this this tournament and the September tournament both? We were in a different location than usual, and it was a little hard on us with the glare. So we're going to try to relocate for the October tournament. Uh, we do see a Maridon come down with that Luxury Ball. Luxury Ball, of course, lets you search for any Pokemon except for a Pokemon level X. And his deck doesn't run any level X, so it's just whatever Pokemon he feels like running. Uh, at this point, it's just Maridon and Maridon. I think the fourth Maridon is prized, so choosing not to get it. All right. <laughs> I say choosing not to get it as if they had any choice. You get the idea. Uh, so we just see a field blower and lightning energy choosing to grab lightning energy. I feel like that's probably an okay idea. Just attach and pass. All right. Now United Wings is going to go crazy and just start nuking everything. So you see the Acrobike discarding an Iono off the Acrobike. Playing down Flamigo. Flamigo going to search out the other Flamigo in the deck. This plays exactly like the standard format version at this point. You're just trying to get all those United Wingsers out. You just have some extra tools to do it. So there's the Flamigo. They go to hand. You just see a discard with Quick Ball, getting rid of one of the Flamigo. See a Squawkabilly. Makes sense. Grab the Squawkabilly off the Quick Ball. You're getting a double whammy there. You do see a Muscle Band attachment to that Flamigo on the bench. That's just a, a clean plus 20 damage against whatever. You do see the Fates Collide Mew come down. And we see a research for a clean seven. So already lots of cards in the discard pile. Computer search discarding two of the United Wings Murkrow for a Watchroll, getting a Watchroll, throwing that in the hand. And then if I am not mistaken, they're going to drop the Marshadow. Marshadow makes sense. Now the Hisui and Heavy Ball also makes sense. Grabbing one of the United Wingers in the Lost Zone, or in the, in the prizes, not Lost Zone, uh, out of there and putting that in the hand. 
They still have not used Squawkabilly, attaching an energy to the Marshadow, and now they're using Squawkabilly, drawing six cards more, as if they haven't drawn enough yet. <laughs> and then they're using Battle Compressor to fish even more of the United Wings attackers out of the deck. Just going to go super fast. So Watcher, Watchful, and Battle Compressor. They're actually getting another one of the Battle Compressors out of the deck with Battle Compressor, so they don't draw into it because they're like, you know what? I just don't need it anymore, so let's get rid of it. And they do. It's crazy. Though... The ditto is going to be stuck in the active spot unless I can find your way to retreat it, though. So that may not be an attack this turn. Because they did attach to the Marshadow. Just maybe a bit of a mistake on their part. I see another use of the Hisuian Heavy Ball. And, yep, that was indeed an error. So they are going to have to pass. Whoops! Went a little tur too turbo there and failed to attach the ditto to get the attack off. All right, we do see a Max Elixir. Looking at the top seven cards there, just finding one right off the bat, choosing to just grab it and say, you know what, I don't need to look at the rest, it's fine. Uh, we know we know we have an energy. Attaching it to the, one of the Benchmen Maridon, makes sense, that's what you're supposed to do. And seeing as all three of the Bench Pokemon are Maridon, you don't have much of a choice. Uh, I do see a Speed Lightning Energy come down on that same Maridon. They're going to draw two cards off of that Speed Lightning Energy. And we see a Computer Search. So computer search, discard two cards, and then search your deck for a card. This is very much the ace spec of choice for many decks in both the expanded and the eternal formats, because it is just so strong. Do have to wonder what card they're going to get? Perhaps a generator? I don't know. Okay, so they've decided their hand is just not very good right now, and they're going to go for an Iono. And they're going to play the Iron All righty. All right, so. Getting those cards off of the top of the deck there. Kind of make choices about what to do. Do you see an electric, uh, electric generator coming down? Finding one lightning energy off of it. Hoping to find a second one. Just, just a speed lightning, which unfortunately you cannot attach with electric generator as it is not a basic lightning energy so they're just gonna oh electric generator actually went into, accidentally went into the deck there they caught it pulled it out real quick and just gonna do a quick shuffle get that deck shuffled back up after the generator unfortunately i'm not sure yeah it looks like Pete, the the Maridon player is also going to whiff not uh, with an attack here despite having a fully powered up right on on the pinch that's very unfortunate uh, but at this point, uh, I think they're okay, right? They're going to see United Wings is going to maybe attach to the Ditto this time and either retreat it out or attack with it. I see a Dark Incendiary. Okay, they are going to retreat. They're just going to go straight in with a Marshadow to copy Murkrow's United Wings. And uh, with weakness, that is way enough damage. So we do some we do see three price cards off of that that knockout because that is a tag team GX Pokemon, the initial ruiners of the game with three price cards. Alright. So that Maridon is fully powered up and will be able to take a, re a return KO here on that Marshadow. We do see an Acrobike. Acrobike discarding the professor's research and then choosing just to grab the energy and attach it to one of the bench to Maridon. And then we're going to see a knockout on Marshadow. So the Maridon player is going to take a couple prize cards here. They are not without prize card taking. But I think at this point it's kind of a bit hard for the United Wings player to lose. <laughs> it is kind of difficult to see what that active Pokemon is, but I believe it's that Flamigo that was on the bench. They've attached a double turbo, or double, 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 turbo double colorless energy to it uh, to make use of its attack. United Wings. That's the only way that one can be powered up, so that would make the most sense. And we do see a sufficient damage to take that Maridon out and really put the Maridon player in a bit of a pickle. So they can attach a turn board to the active Maridon and then kind of cross their fingers that they get Thunder Mountain and another attachment. They have the attachment. They do need Thunder Mountain to take another KO. But at this point, the price trade is horribly out of their favor. They would need a Guzma... Guzma would be good for them. One, two, three, four, and five. Unfortunately, that is a whiff. 
Six, seven. Uh, that's not how many cards you're supposed to take off of generator. I guess he's just digging a little further. Yeah, he's scooping. Okay, so he's just checking a little bit extra in the deck to see if he can get the knockout, and he can. So that is going to be the game. All right, next up we have Bayonet Houndoom versus United Wings. This is a different United Wings deck, believe it or not. This is not the same player. Uh, there just happened to be two United Wings decks that were doing pretty well at the tournament. Uh, a little bit of um, information, I guess, for players who are looking at these particular videos for some deck ideas for the eternal format. Uh, Houndoom has been banned since the since this particular tournament happened, as has Technical Machine TS1. So if you're looking to build Bayonet, uh, look toward a future video where Bayonet Vileplume will be featured. And uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, not Bayonet Houndoom levels of, of overpowered, but still pretty good. Uh, Bayonet Houndoom in this particular deck is running the Technical Machine TS1, which I mentioned earlier, that allows it to attack for free. Uh, so you can take the Shepard up and just evolve itself into Bennett or immediately evolve a Houndour up into a Houndoom on their first turn going second, which means Houndoom's lock is established basically immediately, which is crazy. Uh, you do have the Bennett EX, which has the attack Everlasting Darkness, which does 30 damage and then item locks your opponent. And then Poltergeist, which does 60 damage for each trainer card in your opponent's hand. So once you've item locked your opponent with Lonesome, or with, well, really with Lonesome, but also with Everlasting Darkness, their trainer cards tend to build up in their hand, and then Poltergeist just hits harder and harder because it's very difficult for them to get rid of those item cards, and or any, any trainer cards, really, um, because they can only use one supporter card per turn. Uh, with that said, uh, Bennett Houndoom, pretty strong deck overall. Uh, has lots of options for it with Echoing Horn. Uh, it just it does its job, right? It's very simple, very straightforward, but it does have a weakness in darkness, which United Wings can exploit. That let's look at United Wings. This United Wings deck is very similar to the other United Wings deck, but it does not play any copies of Ditto. Instead, it plays two copies of the Mew from Fates Collide. So instead of one copy, it runs two and no copies of Ditto. Uh, this deck also does run Sky Pillar as the other one did, but it also has a copy of Parallel City to discard Squawkabilly after it's been used so that it's a little bit less of a liability. It also runs a copy of Hue. Hue is a supporter card that says both players either draw or discard cards until they have five cards in their hand. So if you have a large hand with United Wings, which is not impossible, uh, you can super nuke your hand or... Uh, if you're really desperate for a draw, you can draw. And then it's a little bit of disruption against your opponent's hand if they have a big hand, like say, I don't know, Lost Link Box or Reggie Gigas that happens to be drawing six cards every turn with Roxy. So it's a little bit of a counter for some of the cards in the meta, or some of the decks in the meta, rather. Uh, just like the other build of United Wings, this is also running the Marshadow GX to hit for weakness against uh, Maridon and other Light and Titan Pokemon. But as I mentioned a little bit ago, Murkrow is going to be the star of this game. Murkrow is going to hit Bennett for weakness, and that may be a little too much for Bennett to deal with. Let's see right now. As our players get shuffled up, we'll remind you that this is Bennett Houndoom versus United Wings. Our Bennett player is on the left, United Wings on the right. Now, as we see a Shuppet, that is a Shuppet in the glare there. And a Mew from Fates Collide. That is actually a great start for United Wings. We do see Squawkabilly already down and a Battle Compressor already out. Turn one from the opening hand. That is a good start. Dropping two Murkrow and a Watchel. I would have preferred nuking the Watchels first because the Murkrow are such a good attacker against being that you really want to focus on making sure you can get those out. If you're discarding them all with Battle Compressor, you're less likely to hit them so you can use them against the Bayonet. That said, it looks like they're not really hurting for ways to nuke their hand, so... We'll see. Parallel City dropped a little prematurely, but I guess they're going to have to get rid of it anyway. I can't read the card right now, but if I'm not mistaken, I think they actually have the bench limitation towards themselves at the moment. Yes, they do. They, they're limiting their own bench. That's a little unusual. Um, but fair enough, I guess. That's what they wanted to do. They are getting those United Wingsers in the discard pile pretty quickly. Oh, there's two more. Go, go, United Wings. Go, go. They are going first, so they're not going to be attacking this turn. 
They're already at seven United Wingsers in the discard pile, which is good. Looks like they're going for another another Pokemon. Maybe fishing out a Murkrow? Nope. They're getting another watch. Will I, have, I, I do wonder if they're Murkrow or maybe prized. Ooh, I don't... I don't know if I like that attachment. You're not attacking this turn, and that's a that's a double colorless energy. You don't you only have four of those, and the deck doesn't run any special charge to recover them, so that feels really sketchy. I think I would have either held on to it or attached it to the Flamigo. Especially since the Mew has free retreat. I think the Flamigo is just a better attachment. Alright. So we're gonna see some movement on the side for Baynet here. See a search for the technical machine off of a computer search, discarding a Shuppet and a Versa Seeker. Got a little bit of a shuffle shuffle there. I do have another Shuppet to put down. Normally I would question playing that second Shuppet, but I feel like the active one is just going to go down because it's going to get whammed by United Wings. Because there's there's really no world in which United Wings doesn't get a, a, a knockout this next turn. If the United Wings player can find a Murkrow and retreat into it with a, a Darkness Energy, it's just a, it's an instant KO. Okay, so we do see Houndoom come down, Houndoom come down with the Technical Machine TSO-1, so they're using the Evolution Attack, basically, or Evoluter, whatever it's called. Basically, lets you search your deck for a Pokemon to evolve one of your Pokemon on your bench and just evolve it up. I actually, think I'm, actually, I think this one is any of your Pokemon. The The newer TM that's coming out in uh, Paradox Rift is specifically your bench, but I think this one allows you to do your active, too. Not that it really matters. <clears throat> it was the bench that was evolved this time. Um, all right, so we see an Acrobike discarding the Hisuian Heavy Ball. Interesting. I don't think they've looked at their prize cards yet, which means they may feel pretty confident that... I... Whoa, they're just... They're discarding those Murkrows all happy-go-lucky-like. And there goes another one. They had one in hand. Why are they discarding their Murkrows? It makes your life so easy. <sighs> Maybe they've prized all their energy, all their darkness energy. That's that's the only excuse I can think of. All four of their Murkrow are in the discard pile. Why? Maybe they're just counting on Houndoom, uh, Houndoom Bennett player not being able to set up. I right, see a second attachment on that, the Shuppet. And the level ball. That's interesting. Going for Lapras, maybe? Uh, No. Looking at that baby bayonet. Huh. Okay. I feel like the only reason you'd go for that is if you're about to just nuke your hand. There's no reason to play that against the United Wings deck. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what's happening. They're going to use Versus Seeker for research, it looks like. Yeah, Okay. So they're just playing the research, basically. Using the Versus Seeker in their hand to get fresh cards. Okay, there's the Bayonet. So there's Bayonet EX. Ready to attack into that Mew. It will definitely take a knockout. If I'm not mistaken, that particular Bayonet has a Muscle Band and a Horror Psychic Energy attached to it. So it's not going to be using... It's not going to be using Everlasting... All right, it will be using Everlasting Darkness this turn. So it will keep United Wings item locked. But I don't know if that really matters right now because United Wings is so... It's got such a lead at the moment that it just doesn't care. So the, the problem the problem Bennett has, or Bennett Houndoom at least, has with United Wings is that it goes so fast... That it's basically set up and ready to go by the time Houndoom is up and running, even with that technical machine. So maybe, <laughs> um, maybe the likelihood for United Wings to win this matchup is really good. It is interesting because this matchup, so Bennett has obviously evolved with the banning of Houndoom. This matchup is much harder now for United Wings. In fact, when it comes to the September tournament, uh, you'll actually see the finals. 
they're over in just a couple of minutes because uh, United Wings has no recourse. Um, there's no way, at least in that particular build, uh, United Wings has no way to deal with Vileplume. It just, it just, it has no, no understanding of what it can do, uh, because the, the vile plume from Burning Shadows just makes it so that none of its Pokemon can attack. Not that it's not protecting the Pokemon in any way; it's literally making them unable to attack. And the United Wings has no answer for that. So, the play that we've been testing out recently is using a Kilowattrel to try to take that role so that Kilowattrel can do some damage. Obviously it's a double attachment to do 150 damage, but that is enough to knock out the Vile Plume and hopefully give yourself a moment to breathe against Bennett Vile Plume. Whereas this matchup here, I feel like it's almost a gimme for United Wings. United Wings hits very, very hard, very, very fast, sets itself up long before Bennett can really do what it wants to do. And so by the time United Wings is trying to, uh, by the time Baynet rather has a chance to, to to disrupt United Wings and stop it from using its items, it doesn't really care anymore. The, 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 the problem with United Wings is all its Pokemon are very squishy anyway. So having a bunch of items and trainer cards in your hand in general just doesn't really bother it much. We did see we did see Bennett take a knockout. Mew is on and is in the active spot. We do need a benched Pokemon at the moment for Mew to copy. We see a computer search. I think that computer search off that trainer's mail. So it, if I'm not mistaken, I'm quite certain I'm right here. Um, because Houndoom uh, is only in effect if your bench is larger than the Houndoom players. Its effect for trainer locking is not in effect at the moment. And the player playing Bayonet used Everlasting or used Poltergeist rather instead of Everlasting Darkness, which means that basically it doesn't really matter. There's no item lock or trainer lock in general. Uh, there is a knockout on the Bayonet there, so the United Wings player will take two prize cards, bringing them down to three, so it's now three to four. And then. So now we have to deal with, okay. At this point, I think it's just a loss for the Bennett player. They're evolved. They're weak to dark. There's a free retreater on their opponent's side. So even if they take a knockout, the, that Merc is just going to come up and KO the Bennett. And that's basically game over. They don't have another Shepard down. They don't really have any way to deal with the Merc There's no weakness policy. There's no... Uh, we miss guard energy. There's just nothing of that sort. We do see a Guzma going after the squawk. See, I don't, I don't like that. But if you had Guzma go after the Murkrow, make it a little harder. At least make it so they have to fight for that one shot. They are doing the, they are doing the free retreat or not free retreat. They're, they're retreating the Houndoom. I think they're just choosing to try to item lock with the squawk in the active spot, but. At this point, both the Murkrow and the Mew have energy on them, so it doesn't really matter. They can attach to the active and just retreat it. So there's there's a research. They're, they're going to find energy. There's like no, almost no cards left in deck. Yeah, there's a retreat. Putting the Murkrow up, that's a KO. That's a one-shot, an easy one-shot. That Murkrow should have been the target for the Guzma from the get-go. All right. We do see Lapras come down, searching the deck for a supporter card with the support navigation Pokemon power, or Poke power specifically. At this point, I just don't think there's any way for Bayonet to recover. I think we're going to see a scoop here. Yep, there's a scoop. Game over. Let's look at the finals. Welcome to the finals. We have a real good one, too. Two single prize decks in the finals. What? craziness all right so we have the first iteration of united wings not the one that was featured in the last round the first iteration of united wings versus regigigas which happened to be featured in the first round well a newer version of it was featured in the last round when we look at the deck list i'll point out some of the differences but it's a similar list uh, the players worked quite a bit on the consistency for the deck so the consistency of this build is not quite where it is now in the finals if that makes sense um 
it's it's much better in round one in the replacement video and the replacement game than it is in this particular tournament in general. Uh, that said, that does not mean it's not going to put up a fight. United Wings is going to be busted as you've seen already. This particular build of United Wings is the one with the dittos. It has the Mew. It's pretty good. I don't really need to go into depth on it because you have seen the list before and it's very similar to the one we just watched. But let's look a little bit at the Reggie Gaius just to see the differences. So this build was playing Challenge. Challenge is an item card that basically says, hey, opponent, do you want each of us to fill our benches? And then if they say yes, then both players fill their benches. And it's really cool. And if they say no, then you just draw two cards. Well, players are not stupid and they've gotten to the point where they realize that allowing Reggie Gaius to fill its bench is not ideal so they just tell it no challenge is not so great but we do see a little bit of a difference here in that roxy is only a three of in this build there's a copy of zinnia's resolve pretty decent card roxy is just better especially with the double execute this particular build of regigigas is not playing the wabafet that shuts off the abilities of non-psychic pokemon so unfortunately this one will not be able to shut down stuff like squawkabilly or ditto or flamingo for that matter this older version of the list is also not running acrobikes and is running only one copy of Versus Seeker as opposed to the two that the newer list is running. Bit of a difference, but very similar idea, very similar in practice. Let's see it in action. All right, our players are getting up and ready to go. I'll watch them set up here a little bit. Kind of see how they do with the mulligans and such. Ooh, Execute Start is not the greatest, but a Flamigo Start isn't either, so... Both players having kind of wobbly starts. Do you see a trainer's mail on the Regigigas side? Not the end of the world there. Battle Compressor's pretty good. Battle Compressor lets you get a couple of the energies out and nuked so they're ready to go for Regigigas later down the road. Okay, Rescue Energy and a couple of Prism Energies. Seems like an ideal situation there. I think maybe only a Counter Energy maybe okay, but I think for turn one, that's probably a really good setup actually. Field Blower, an interesting choice. Nothing really to target, but maybe there's not anything else they want. I'm gonna play down the Kyogre. I guess I just don't want to be donked, which is entirely possible with United Wings. All right, we do see the Battle VIP Pass for United Wings. Not Battle VIP Pass, you know what I mean. It's Battle Compressor, it's a battle something. It's got a battle in its name and it's a broken item card. <laughs> That's what it is. All right, let's see what we got here. Do you see a ditto coming down? Not, I, I don't really like the ditto in this build, frankly. I did see a little cut there. Player kind of wishy washed on something, wanted to speed that up. It was about, about a minute, kind of not really worth watching. But uh, we do see a Lapras come down. They are going to search, search their deck for a supporter card. We see a professor's research. So they're just they're trying to dig, see if they can find that squawkability and get some of the United Wingsers in the discard pile. So we do see the we do see the research. You get a fresh seven. And a computer search. Discarding two more United Wingsers. I do wonder what that card is they just picked up off that deck. Wonder if it's that floatstone. I have to imagine it probably is. Uh, the Ditto does have double colors energy attached to it, so it can copy Flamigo's United Wings, and it did. Looks like with looks like six United Wingsers in the discard pile, so 120 damage. That execute is scrambled. All right, we do see the propagation on the execute, bringing it back to the hand. We're going to see an Ultra Ball discarding two execute. So these executes have the propagation ability that lets them to basically bounce back to your hand from the discard pile. Super strong effect. Right. And a pass. Not the best of starts, it looks like, for Regigigas. I do see a Hisuian Heavy Ball on the side of United Wings. Looks like United Wings has chosen not to take anything out of the, the prizes, but to be frank, I'm not sure there was anything there to take. Oh look, another another Hisuian Heavy Ball. I, I happen to wonder if uh, anything has changed in those price cards. All right, so we're just gonna see another knockout on that Kyogre. Very unfortunate, but it is what it is. We do see a Skyfield come down. Rescue Rescue Stretch are gonna get the Kyogre back, trying to guarantee that you just don't lose the game. We do see a Reggie Rock. So one of the Reggies is finally out and, and doing stuff. 
Uh, looks like they're going to Guzma stall or try to Guzma stall, bringing out the Kyogre. Lapras in the active spot. Lapras has a two retreat cost. So it's really difficult to get it out if you don't have a float stone. And the float stone was blowered away. It was on the Flamigo. So we're going to see a discard of the Iono. Bold choice. Because they, they don't want to use it for their opponent. So they're just going to get all the United Wingsers out. That's perfectly good. Get that Murkrow going. Um, well, that Murkrow goes to hand, but it looks like they're going to use research anyway. So fun stuff. <laughs> all right, we're seeing double colors attachment to Lapras and retreat. They're like, nope, we're not going to deal with that. We're just going to take another knockout. This is... It does feel like United Wings may have a runaway victory here. Uh, Ditto is going to copy once again United Wings from the Flamingo on the bench and just take that KO. See a trainer's mail on Reggie Gigas' side. Getting a quick ball out. Quick ball for something? I, I do have to wonder, okay, Radiant, Radiant Greninja does seem good. You should probably have special energy in your hand. You can discard it and draw two cards. You want the Radiant, you want the, you want the special energy in your discard pile anyway for Regigigas. So having Radiant Greninja in the active spot, or not in the active spot, in play rather, just seems like a good idea. We do see another trainer's mail, just digging, 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 trying to find something of interest. I saw a Roxy, I think, on that trainer's mail. Yeah, Roxy. They have the execute in the discard pile, so that's just basically a straight draw six, which is, I don't have to tell you, that's so good. <laughs> I, there's no way we don't see that right now because this Reggie Gigas deck desperately needs to set up. So you can see a little bit of a shuffle. Player going to have to propagate those execute. Are they going to propagate the execute? Yeah, there they are. All right, so the execute propagated back to the hand, and Roxy discards both of them, drawing three cards for each of them, so six total cards. It's just such a good effect. All right, Hisuian Heavy Ball digging through those prize cards. I see a Regigigas in there. Immediately chosen by the player, said, I need that card. Let's get that card. So I'm going to play down Steel, Rock, and Regigigas. They do have Skyfield in place, so they can go all the way up to eight. They're going to discard the propagated execute with a quick with a quick ball to get the reg ice so that puts one two three four four that's all five no six and maybe six one two three four five what are we missing all right so he's using the poke power on the reg ice to force that ditto out of the active spot which is probably a good move honestly we are missing the Reggie Alecki, unfortunately, to use Ancient Wisdom. So not a terrible, uh, not a terrible turn from the Reggie Gigas player there, but that would have been much better as a turn one than at turn three. I think that was. So that's kind of rough. Did you see a Mew come out of the deck for United Wings? And tracking shoes. I imagine that the choices right now are not especially complicated. You just kind of need to go more turbo. Just getting rid of some liabilities in the deck, saying get rid of Squawk, get rid of the Marshadow. It actually amazes me that United Wings is this set up without having even used the Squawk ability. I do see the Skyfield get collapsed out with the Sky Pillar. I do see Gigas. Gigas is still in play. The Reggie Rock discarded that extra Reggie Rock. So not the end of the world. The Reggie's player will need to find another Skyfield and a Reggie Alecki if they're going to survive, though. We just see an attachment on the Flamigo, meaning that that Drago is now also knocked out, which is super rough. Skyfield does come back down. Now we just need Reggie Alecki and Reggie Drago. Roxy, once again, drawing six with Propagations, Execute. 
That hand has got to be enormous at this point. Discarding a double colorless energy with concealed cards to draw two more cards. We do see the Reggie Alecki. We just need a way to get that Reggie Drago back. I see propagation and a quick ball. So we can get a, we can get another Reggie Drago. And we do. Reggie Drago is now out and ready to attack. Unfortunately, that Radiant Greninja is now in the active spot, being obnoxious and in the way. Kyogre comes down. Do have to wonder if they're going to choose to use that as the attachment for this turn and get that set up. So manual attachment to the active Radiant Greninja. Putting the Kyogre in the active spot. And then they're going to use Regigigas' Ancient Wisdom to attach the energies to Kyogre to take a swing of 80 across the board, maybe? Yeah, this is one of those times where Flamigo having more than 80, uh, more than more HP than the rest of the United Wings Pokemon really is rough. <laughs> because there's not going to be a KO on that Flamigo, but everything else could go down. Yep, so the whole bench gets swept there. And Flamigo does take 80 damage, which is pretty good, frankly. So all, all United Wings is two, needs is two more prize cards, though. So can they pull it off? Another Acrobike with an Iono and an Ultra Ball. Going to like they're discarding the Ultra Ball and choosing the Iono. I wonder if they're going to choose to play that here in a second. They are playing down Murkrow. I think, feel like they probably should just attach that Murkrow. Skyfield right now going away with that Sky Pillar. The Gigas player having to make some tough choices there. But they are going down to the best Gigases. I should say the best Reggies. They're not all Gigas. They all feel like Gigas in their heart. Uh, we do see a couple of Flamigo and an Energy go back to the deck. I believe that was a Super Rod. Not entirely certain there. All right, we see a Flamigo also come down. So there's no, no shot that the deck gets bodied by Bench out this turn. But if that Kyogre doesn't go down, I mean, the Kyogre will go down. As if the Kyogre doesn't go down, then it's game over. But the Kyogre is going down. There's no way United Wings doesn't get to enough damage. And it's already at 10 from what I can see, based on the counters the player has there. Thanks to the player, by the way, for doing that. That's very nice for the casting afterward. Um, yeah, so that's already a prize card. I think it's just kind of rough at this point because the Flamigos are really, really good. So even if the Kyogre can come back into play at this point, it's kind of too little too late because you need to be able to sweep with two of those. Getting, getting the Kyogre back in play would do two more prize cards, but the United Wings player has very wisely not put any other squishy Pokemon out. So just a couple of Flamigo and that one Murkrow. So at best, they could get two prize cards, not the three. That means that ultimately what's going to happen here is that Regigigas, or Regidrago rather, will take an attack against that Flamigo that's in the active spot. And it will get a knockout, but it just won't be enough. And that's assuming the Regigigas player can actually get Ancient Wisdom up and going, which it isn't looking super good right now. They're going to hope and pray off of three cards with, within. They need Registeel out to do the shenanigans. Okay, and not the end of the world. Registeel did come out to play, so I guess they do get the Ancient Wisdom after all. Registeel... Enabling Ancient Wisdom. Ancient Wisdom not happening just yet. We do see a propagation. And a forced... A forced switch. It's like a rescue stretcher for... A Pokemon? Something? For Regigigas. Okay, so they're going to go for two separate... Two separate... Uh, Gigas plays here. I see they put... 
Looks like Reggie Alecki in the active spot. And they put the rescue energy and another energy attached. I think that's counter energy. That is a knockout, but at this point, there's not much needed for game. So we see a research and attachment, and there's a knockout. So that's game one. Let's go to game two. All right. Shuffle up for game two. This is United Wings versus Red Gigas. This is the second game of the finals. Uh, ready? Six prize cards are out. Flamigo versus looks like Reggie Drago in the active spot this time around. Do you see a quick ball discarding a prism energy? Making tough choices about what to grab already. Hopefully this is prize checking. Getting a Radiant Greninja. I think that's a good choice this early on. You know, you're going to have Sky Field, so you'll be able to have whatever you need later anyway. Reggie Ilecki. Good. Got two of the Reggies out. Probably going to lose the Reggie Drago, but... Skyfield going down prematurely, I think. I feel like that's maybe a little early for that. Definitely early for that. I don't think you ever do that because they can just bump it with Sky Pillar. You know they run it. You just played against them in that first game. Uh, Acker Pike... Choice between Iono and another card. Iono's ditched. So they know their opponent is bricking right now. Probably not worth playing. All right, we see... Looks like, I think that was just three United Wings. Let's go to the discard pile. So Flamigo has no energy attached at the moment, but it doesn't take much for this deck to find what it wants. We do see a Ditto come down. There's the energy. It found it. It probably had it in hand, let's be honest. And then we have... Was a card? I'm not sure what they just played there. Looks like they ditched their super run for it, though. All right. Discarding some more Pokemon with Battle Compressor off that research. So, do you see two Murkrow and a Watchroll? So that number is up to six, seven already. That's good. I see a muscle band. Looks like they're eyeing up the muscle band there. Seven's already 140, which I believe is enough to deal with that uh, Reggie Drago. Yeah, that's just going to be a KO. So we're already down to five price cards on the United Wings side. Active Radiant Greninja. Discarding a double colorless energy to draw two more cards. That can see the cards. We did get a replacement Reggie Drago, and looks like we got a Roxy too. The unfortunate thing is the Reggie Drago player doesn't have access to Propagation Execute right now. It's a little too early for it. They're gonna have to discard something else in their hand to get those to get that much needed draw. They're going to discard the other Reggie Drago. That is some desperation. I'm gonna play Ultra Ball. Discarding Naganadal and Guzzlord GX and Zinnia's Resolve to get a Reg Ice. Seems okay. Rescue Stretcher. Okay. I don't hate discarding the other Reggie Drago as much anymore. And you see Scoop Up Cyclone on that Radiant Greninja. Allows them to bring that Reggie Drago to the active spot and make use of its ability. And also opens up using another Concealed Cards this turn. Trainer's Mail getting a Roxy. Roxy, super good. They have already played our turn. Support this turn. Just keep that in mind. So they can't play it again yet. And like I said earlier, they don't have Propagation out just yet either. And this card, a couple cards to force their opponent to switch their active Pokemon. So they're going to need to find an energy for that Ditto. It looks like they have one already in hand. So no biggie. Now Ditto can attack. So yikes. And now there's another Ditto in play. So Reggie Drago falls. I see a Thornton in hand. 
which is not the most useful thing, but it does get rid of the Greninja and allow it to allow the player to maybe draw some cards. They're going to attach rescue energy to that Drago and then draw one, two, and three. Drawing three cards is better than drawing zero. Looks like they're about to play that quick ball. And a pass. Nope, they didn't even play the quick ball. Oof, I do believe the Regigigas is having a rough go here. United Wings, United Wings is kind of off to a slow start too. They haven't, didn't play their squawk ability. They're kind of just chugging along. To be fair, they don't need huge numbers in this matchup. They, they, seven out is as plenty they with everything except for Regigigas. And Regigigas, you only need one more, so it's not that bad. And you do have Muscle Band available to you too. So Kyogre and Regidrago both go down to the bench. Do you see a quick ball probably for the Gigas itself? Yeah, there's a Gigas. So that's one, two, three, four of the Regis in play at the moment. You need two more. We're missing Reggie Steel and Reggie Rock. So counter energy used to retreat that Reggie Alecki, putting the Reggie Drago in the active spot and drawing a couple more cards. And quick ball. Okay, so there's another quick ball in the hand. Discarding Aurora energy, probably to find one of the two missing Reggies. They still need the way to get the other missing. Oh, they're not getting one of the Reggies. Propagation execute. I wonder if they're building for Roxy. Do they sell the Roxy in the hand, maybe? Versus Seeker. So they're going to Versus Seeker for the Roxy, discarding a Propagation Execute for three more cards, and they're going to use Battle Compressor. Battle Compressor lets them get three cards from their deck straight to their discard pile. So they are going to put the other Propagation Execute there so that on future turns, Roxy will have its full power by discarding just a couple of Propagated Execute. But unfortunately, I don't... Yeah, the system we have passed. I don't think the Case can do anything else, and they can't. They're kind of just stuck. They got to the point where they can start drawing okay off of Roxy, but it's kind of too little too late. That looks like it was all supporter cards on on the United Wings side there in the prize cards. That's interesting. Sky Pillar does come down, disrupt that Sky Field, but at this point, it's not the end of the world because Reggie Gigas isn't really going to manage to survive, I don't think. I bet I'll have another Sky Field. Just a big old stadium war going on right now, and the sun coming out to, to light, light the show. They need Reggie Rock. Reggie Steel. Yeah, they're just passing again. Oof. You hate to see it. It's funny because. Both these players did very, very well in their Swiss rounds. And if, if I'm mistaken, they were both at least 2-1, if not 3-0 at this point. So watching Regigigas kind of crumble with the bricking here, it's really unfortunate when it had done so well in the previous rounds. I think they're assessing whether or not it's time to scoop. They're going to play the Rescue Stretcher. Getting get, getting Reggie Draco, maybe? Okay, they're, they're actually going to just shuffle three back in. Oh, boy. And that's going to be game. So they're going to take that knockout, but with one prize card left on the you know, wing side, that's, that's just end, the end of it. There's no recourse. All right, well, that has been the August... 2023 uh, Eternal Format Tournament at Dragon's Lair at Alamo Ranch. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you want to learn more about the Eternal Format, you can visit justinbasil.com slash eternal. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.